Yeah, it sounds perfect. It sounds perfect. It's it's really good. Let's it's crystal clear. I thought it was gonna be more like clunky. It sounds per- fucking awesome. Sick, oh. man, you sound good. Yo, um, dude. So I I'm I'm so interested in everything that you've done and that are doing, man. I was uh prior to this uh, Zoom meeting, we were talking on the phone, like more or less, kind of going over. There's no outline, obviously, for this. This is you know freestyle and and it's loose and we can do whatever we want so this is episode two thirsty thursday i'm your host pedro amos this is the the almighty auto van scratch from you to triangle family <laughs> yes yeah, 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 yeah. this is the story of you what makes you special where you come from this is one of the most exciting stories ever told because it's about you. <laughs> Dude, it's so good, man. And I like, oh my God, how long have I known you for? Like 25 years or some shit? 25 years, yeah. Yeah, well, since, yeah, since 1995. So we know each other from Miami. Obviously, you're 305 royalty. You and I were both raised and born and raised here in, in, in Miami. And you've been DJing since I met you. So that's 95. You're already DJing. We would go to your mom's house. And you had a little setup there in your room and we would just sit there and bug out and you would just be playing the, so it's a lot of old, that was hip hop back in the day. Uh, that's the nineties hip hop. That was, you know, the Nas and the mob deeps and the, and the stuff, but you were also getting into that electronic kind of vibe too. You had DJ Dr. Pace rock. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 95 bro. My mom's, my mom's house in the room. Yeah. That, I would, that the window would open and be 32nd Avenue. <laughs> And like, yo, I, the, the amount, like, after, we would skip school and yeah. we would, you know, either not go to school or after school, come to my crib. Sometimes there'd be 12 people in my little room <laughs> passing the mic. And I had like the, I had this effects, um, like DJ Gemini effects mic thing. And um, so it would, it would just like do echo and pitch and, uh, everybody would just be messing around and we would be dropping beats. It was, and you know, it was it sick. Was and you, out, you know, it was, do you remember your, the mixtapes and these were literally like tapes. They were mixed tapes that you had circulating in Gables high were legendary, epic. People would have them and then borrow them from other people and like try and maybe dub them or like, be like, yo, I let you hold this. I need it back. I need it back. And then people would be like holding a mixtape for a week at a time. It was the craziest shit. Uh, thank you, bro. Yeah, I miss those times, bro. The, me and Pace would drop them. I would do them alone. Pace, we, we, for some reason, we just knew what weird underground, you know, Big Ups Cry Jewel Records. I would go to the record store and like everything that, there was like a freestyle record store. They liked like booty bass and freestyle. They weren't into weird electronic music or weird hip hop. So like when they would get something that would be weird, they put it in the dollar bin. And, you know, I would spend, I would spend days just, you know, looking through the dollar bin and I'd be like, what is this? Hear it? You know, they were always like, you can't hear this stuff in the dollar bin. That's why it's the dollar bin, you know? And I'd be like, let me hear it. And, you know, after a while, they just didn't care. Right. There was... There was one, I bring it up, I'm, I mean, I bring it up almost every time I see you, it depends uh, on, on uh, if I remember, but that there was one mixtape, one song that I remember, it was, damn, why they want to stick me for my papers, but in Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like. That was a rare, like, B-side dubs, dub, like, you know, weird stuff that would come to the record store and. You know, they probably made a thousand copies, you know, and it never really went anywhere. Some New York underground or some It was so good. Stuff. Yo soy manicero, cero, no tengo dinero. Mi sueño es tener un Mercedes, pero. pero right. Back in the day. Look, look at how, how embedded that mix is in my mind that I remember that from 20 years ago. I don't even know what I had for lunch today. <laughs> 25 <laughs> years ago. 25 years ago. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's bugged out. 
And then, and then, so you went, so we were interacting a lot back in the 95, 96 house parties. You were DJing house parties. Yep. Um, tons of house parties, tons of, um, I started DJing clubs, you know, but yeah, then it was just house parties. And like, I mean, that's how I started DJing. My girl Estrella and her brother Linguini, they used to throw these house parties and I, when I was 12. And, and my boy's like, yo, if we get, if, if we all invest 50 bucks, we can buy a making bean, you know, Mickey Mouse version of techniques and the right. mixture. And we go and we, we get dollar records and, and that's how we started, you know? That's it. And, and that was, that, that was Estrella and Linguini put you on. They were like, oh, let's go do, let's go put this together. No, no, they, like, we need DJs for our parties and they, the DJs charge us 300. Why don't you guys become DJs and we'll give you 150. Dope. Some shit like some, you know, you know, you know, bartering Miami, you know, and that, we yeah, were yeah. going to parties anyways because it was, uh, Estrellita was um, a lyrics girl. So it was like, you know, uh, all, fe- all girls school, so mm-hmm. the whole crew would just roll up, you know, 12 deep, you know, 12 years old, 12 deep, you know, <laughs> and it was legendary, you know, and then, yeah, just continued, and then, you know, in high- when I met you guys in high school, we just vibed, bro. it was a tight family, you know, we were all graffiti writers, yeah, um, go to the 7th Street Pennant, you know, yes. <laughs> go to all these, like, beautiful spots that I don't even know if exist anymore, you know? And you were writing graffiti, you remember, what did what you used to write? I wrote Ace Toe and Otto. Uh, DJ Dr. Pace Rock and uh, Ace Toe. I remember you had like, whatever that's called, like the sample, like DJ Dr. Pace Rock and uh, Ace Toe, uh, Master, what was it? I think it was Medieval Scientist. That's where, when I started making music. So like, first. Yeah, Pace Rock, man. Shout out Pace Rock. Shout out Pace Rock. I saw him maybe 10 years ago. I walk into a club in New York, uh, some kind of bar. You go downstairs. It's called like Bullet or Gunshot or something like that. And I walk downstairs and there he is standing behind the thing. He goes, Amos. And I look at him. I was like, what's up? And he was, was like, oh, shit, dude. What the face rise? What are you doing? What are you doing here? And we had like a moment there. He gave me a gang of drink tickets and he killed it. Yeah, man. That's awesome, though. He's still DJing and drying and. And dating model girls and oh really? Last time, last time I saw him, he told me I, I'm in, I'm in I'm Basel and I'm DJing for like Bon Jovi or something on, on his private yacht. I don't know, it was weird. I was like, damn, bro, you're like next level, you know? But like, <laughs> bro, bro, yo, is that is that when you decided when you got that that first uh, that kind of that knockoff kind of technique system? Is that when it start, started clicking for you that you were like, yo? well, maybe I can do this like as, for money, like no, no part-time job somewhere. Maybe I'll be this for uh, a career. You know, it was, I never, nah, it, like the money thing came later. Um, it would always be like whatever money, look at this guy. It would be like whatever money we made, I'd put it right back into music. Like I'd buy records, or I'd buy gear, because the gear was always like, you know, really yeah, low budget yeah, gear. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I would reinvent, but now nah, the money stuff came yeah, later when yeah, I needed yeah. more money, you know, like That's, 1920. Yeah, but, but, but you were, did you have another job? Were you working somewhere else? Did you have like, yeah, yeah when I was, when I was fif- like, when I met you 15, yeah, I would work at different places. Yeah, like uh, construction worker, baradero as a bad yeah, boy. Yeah, <laughs> of course, of course you did. Everybody yeah. had that baradero yeah. job. Yeah. <laughs> that's sick dude and you ended up uh so doing all that and then right around i guess 99 2000 it's when kind of i didn't see you maybe i would run into you once a year somewhere in the street in a miami miami beach whatever and and say what's up and and catch up for a minute and then slide or maybe we were in the same place but i i, I could never like we never had a moment where we were like so just what, what have you been up to and it's been it's been like it was like 10 plus years yeah. And all of a sudden, in terms of your career, like, I see you, like, I want to know everything that happened. Like, then I see you now, and it's like, bro, I go to your shows now, and I'll, I'll say what's up, and I'm in the back, and everyone's going fucking nuts. There's alligators on stage. You're fucking, it's synthesized bass, heavy bass. I'm just like, I'm, what the fuck is he doing, bro? You're off the chain. <laughs> Thank you, man. It took, 
right? And from like 95 to like, you know, 2015, I guess you started that like 20 years later, right? Not even 10, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just, I started making records and at first it was like, you know, back then we were, we didn't want to, you know, like get shows or we were just making weird art on records and it was you know like you said we were graffiti writers more and then we were and then we were you know making weird music i think i cut my first record with pace um and that's how i got a record deal the guy that cut our record um loved my my music so much his you know schematic records romolo and he was like uh, yo, we want you to do an album for us. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, if we want it to be mad weird and like you're my like take the elements that you made with pace and make and the weird stuff blah, 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 and um, you know make an album just of that. And that's how kind of like ninety nine, ninety ninety eight. I think we dropped the, a record which Miami did not receive well. It was like this. Why? Um, it was an experimental, like, drum and bass hip-hop record, and I think it was just too experimental, you know? Which was funny because the world liked it. Like, people like Autechre and, like, people that I looked up to back in the day, they liked it, you know? I, I even got offered a record deal from Warp through Schematic, mm-hmm. and uh, I was just young and dumb, and I wish I said yes to it, but we were pressed for time. They wanted to release my first two albums that Schematic released. Long story what were the sure. name of those of those albums? Because the, the first album that I that I have here is like the eight thousand BC one. That one. It's that one. BC and Escalofrío were the two first ones on Schematic that kind of the world was like, "What is this weird, super lo-fi, glitched out, swampy music from Miami?" But it was mad weird, you know. People nowadays people have, can get more into it, but. Back then, you know, 2001, it was like, ooh, what is this? Can, can we, you know, there was a scene for what it. Is, you know, yeah. What is it? It was this? like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, that's sick, though. Hey, and this is, this, is, um, this is 2001. I have here the, the album, the 8000 BC. Is, and that's not your label. Did you, did you start your own label? At, through, through yeah, it started. I had my own label, but... Um, Triangle Earth Records, Bermuda Triangle Records. I got those two labels. It's like, it's just released so I can release me and my friends through my distributor. And my, actually the digital version of those first albums is through my label. So I, I collect the digital rights uh, for it. Oh. But uh, the vinyl and the CDs came out on Schematic back then. Um, you know, they, it was real, man. We had a real record deal we had like a distributor it was legit um, i am dracula you like wearing the same clothes as your poppy yes it looks really cool right axel you're really cool man he made me wear this actually i was gonna wear something else and then he's like no we have to match your stylist stylist also He's like, yo, we got a match. Like, yeah. match. That's what's up. <laughs> I can't believe he's like a little miniature you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And you were there in the beginning when I was like, yo, baby mom, you know, my, my girl's pregnant. I remember when you, where, where we were in the back, uh, in, in, the, in doing the, in the gym, not inside the, the jiu-jitsu studio, inside, on the outside, we're doing workout, we're working out there, yeah. That was crazy, bro. I know. I know, so Lucas must have been four. Can no, not that young. No, five. Well, no, if he's 11 now, he must have been 11 six. now. So six. Okay. He was six. Yeah. Or seven. Yeah, I think, I think they're in that world, huh? Yeah. yeah that's, that's, it's a good age to do jiu-jitsu. I don't yeah. Yes, but get the speaker one. No, nah, I'm wearing this one. Go get the speaker one. Yeah, yeah it's a good age you're like a brown belt already, though, or something crazy. A purple belt. I should be a black belt if you judge it by time, but um, I'm a, I'm still a purple belt. The thing I with still the blue belt for a long time, and I didn't do jujitsu for like nine months last year. That's my whole year, Oh. 
and I was taking, and I was on tour, you know. You go to different studios when you uh, when you go on tour as well. Sometimes, but sometimes I'm just like, you know, I don't like in like when there's people that train that know that I train. I'll 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 go train with them. Like my boy Alex in Mexico, I spent a week. I uh, we spent like three weeks on tour, and I, I went there like a week straight to his uh, jujitsu gym. It was awesome because you can tell the level of fight sports like. Blue belt fight sports is such a high level. Um, you know, Cyborg trains you. Yeah. Really. You know, he's a world champion. So, like, blue belt in fight sports compared to other schools, I was, like, dominating as a blue belt. You know, That's awesome. Good. Even though in my school, as a blue belt, I'm, like, I was, I was, you know, not that good, you know? And as a purple, I felt even less because, you know, people are so, so, you know, their techniques and, and their the flexibility is so perfect, you know? And, and uh, Cyborg likes to scrap. He likes for people to spar. He's yeah. Always, he's always <laughs> like, get in, go, go fight, go to, go to tournaments, go to this. Like, he, he likes like, for people yeah. to get busy. Last year, I was, uh, I was doing pro class for, um, I did it for like six months. It was awesome. I was, I was going in the morning, you know, to the 11 a.m. to the pro class with all but, the guys. How grounded does that keep you? Because, uh, listen, I was there. I mean, I have a son, so he had to go on a particular days and times. You, were, you had the same schedule as him, and you were there. Every, every, like, Monday, Wednesday, Friday or something like that, like, you were there. I was like, five days a week. Yeah. Crazy. But, you know, then I would go, I would, I would try to go, like, three days. But it's beautiful. It's a beautiful way to... to meditate and train and and you really get centered and you think about you think about working out Babu, can you play over there can you hear that no nope. okay good because he's like messing with the car right right next to me i'm like you have a whole room <laughs> to play but why do you want to play right here <laughs> no he's 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 good man Hey, that you think that keeps you that because keep, you had a real schedule. Are you like that with everything? You have like a, a dedicated schedule, like studio this time day from this so time to this. Now time. I have the schedule, but I never had. Can you hear that? He's like driving me crazy over there. Baku, over there, you're gonna get a timeout for the last twenty years of my life. No schedule. It was like tour, come home, madness. Tour, life, different, you know, flights at 6 in the morning, flights at 6 at night, flights here, tour bus. But now, with the quarantine, I've ha I have a schedule. The last, like, since December, I've had the same schedule. Really? Like, I haven't toured that much since December. So I feel it's like something that I'm like, wow, I really like schedule. Till I, till I die. Both in the same circle, both listen more or less the same, but the way it entered your ear and processed in your head is different than the way that it went in my head and I processed it because you've extracted samples from so many things in the weirdest way and manipulated kind of noise music to make music. It's, it's, the, it's the gnarliest thing. What what were you coming up listening to? Like, what are the names of, of groups, bands, or whatever? I mean, I was always, you know, we were always into, like, the lo-fi, weird, left kind of music. Like, Miami bass is, you know, we grew up listening to Miami bass, freestyle, noise music, lo-fi hip-hop, drum and bass. Yeah. And it was always, what attracted us was the 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 kind of the elements you didn't hear that often, the weirder records or the, you know, like I remember when, you know, we would make music in my room back then, or like Palam would get on the mic and like, <laughs> he would spit something that we'd be like, wow, that's so, you know, we just smoked one and it was like, wow, what? <laughs> yeah. We landed on some spaceship in Mars and, you know, we would listen to Freestyle Fellowship, all these odd yeah. pop, you know, and um, and even when we got into like the Miami Bay stuff, like those stuff, the those Megatron records were so low fi and he would hear, you know, and and just making music 
you know, I'm not a, like, I felt like I was never a musician. I was more of an artist or like a... An artist of sound. Yeah, an artist of sound. So I would hear things I liked and I would paste, paste it all together. And it's so dope. Make some, some really weird abstract collage of work. You know, like, then, you're course, definitely... Huh? Sorry? No, that I would always, I always made like, I feel like I've always made everything that I make now, just like it never got released, you know? Like, Schematic didn't want my drum and bass. They didn't want my Miami bass, you know? So it didn't get released back then. Yeah. You know, the Bodega wanted a little bit more of it, you know? And then I just started releasing more of it, you know? And being like, the personas that I wanted to make, like people tropical and all that, and super main. Cause yeah, cause your auto, but your persona, you have a care, like your auto band scratches is a character, dude. Like it has all these, these elements. Like it's a, it's a production. It's a whole, sh it's a show. It's a whole thing that's been carefully calculated and put together. This is the way I see it. Yeah, no, totally, man. We, you know, we blessed by the triangle light. We open the porthole, let all that energy in. Superman? No, Superman. Bermuda <laughs> Triangle style. Yes! yes. Mo, Miami's such a thing now, right? It's such a vibe, bro. Miami's such a thing right now. Everyone either wants to come here, wants to be or do something here. Like, you know, they always used to be like, oh, you know, in New York, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Miami's fucking rough. To carve a career out here? I mean, in 1995, did we think we're going to be where we're at, you know? You know... There's a, there's a lot, you know, the, you know, the reason I do this, I, I like to bring people that are relevant, that, that are important to the culture, at least in my eyes, like I always say. Um, and it's so uh, interesting to hear. There's a common thread between everybody, whether it's Dax that we had last week on episode one, or whether it's you, or just people just in, in general, you know, having a big picture mentality and, and the stick to itness to not quit. Is, is something that just runs true with everybody that, that ultimately attains success, I think. For sure. I mean, Miami, we're blessed here in Miami. Bermuda Triangle, just the, the energy that flows through the triangle is just so powerful, you know? Um, we born here and raised here is just beautiful. You know, we have all the energy that comes through the water and the gulf and just the, the Caribbean and all the just the energy that blows through here is just magical. There's something magical for sure. I believe, I, I definitely believe in that. I definitely see it. I, I feel it to a certain extent. There's not something that whatever I can touch, but it, I feel it like down here and to the point if you went and you travel a lot. When you travel, you're like, yeah, I'm from Miami. Everyone has a react. Oh, oh, Miami. Oh, you know, everyone has like they, they, a double take kind of like, oh, yeah, oh, Miami sex or, you know, something. You know, welcome to Miami. Now everyone has something to say. Either it's like Miami Vice. I mean, now, no, now it's different. But, you know, 15 years ago when I would start going to Europe, everybody would be like, oh, um, you know, you like Miami Vice? Or oh, doesn't old people live in Miami? And it's, now it's totally different. Now it's like you know, the, the art mecca of the world. Or, you and, know. It's, and it's everywhere. Like everything is, it, you know, you, you come back down here, but everybody has something to say. But I was on a boat in Alaska. In 1999, the guy asked me, where, where are you from? And I said, um, Miami. He goes, oh, and he sung that Will Smith song on a boat in Alaska with like a whale a, a couple of yards away. You know what I mean? Like just some random ass shit. <laughs> it's bugged out, man. It's bugged out. And then I bring that up because, man, you did it, bro. Like you carved the damn career out of this shit down here, out of what you love, your passion to go do, and you're able, able to sustain yourself. But it's, it's the big picture, you know, you know, you have this sound that was just so big and then you started taking it abroad. So tell me about when you first started touring. Um, well, I dropped, like when we, when I dropped that record in 2001, um, that the distribution, you know, uh, schematic had cloud. So we, it got distributed all over the world and, um, through forced exposure, all this, uh, these entities and just, 
we started touring then, you know, uh, I think my first time I went to Europe was 2001, actually. And yeah, 2000 or 2001, we went to uh, Belgium, played this festival in Belgium. Nice. And shortly after that, I did a tour with uh, Dormouse and Basic. And shortly after that, it was just like, you know, I, I, I just, I, you know, I, I went, man. I went on the ride, you know, UFO to Europe. And, and absorbed all the delicious energies. And I started touring all over, you know. A lot of shows in America. Festivals, mostly festivals, right? In the beginning, because that was what was funding the flights. It was, uh, you know, before the Euro. And the flights were mad expensive. And, uh, but it, it worked, you know, just, uh, you know, and it really, like, I would tour a lot. But then in 2006, I dropped this record that, uh, I got a new agent, and then it was, I think, 2006 to 2010. Mm -hmm. I was nine months out of the year on tour. Wow. And this is just domestically and, and foreign as well, mostly foreign? Mostly foreign in that era. A lot of domestic shows, too. Like, I toured a lot with bands and stuff. and um, But it was nonstop. Yeah, it was nonstop touring. And then, you know, come home. Shout out Bermuda Triangle family, you know, play a lot of shows with the Bermuda Triangle family and absorb the Bermuda Triangle energy and then take it out and give it to the world. Talk to me about that squad. Talk, give shout outs here. Do a little roll call. Give me a shout out to, to all that Bermuda Triangle family and Nasty and all the boys. Man, there's so many to, to name, but, Hell yeah. you know, Notorious Nasty, Aho, Master Feathers, Axel. Eric Faden, Jakira, um, Alligator Jesus, you know, there's so many. I, I'm blessed to have so many friends that are part of the triangle, you know? Now, now does everything have a meaning? The, 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 the Jesus, the alligator, what's the meaning behind those? Um, yeah, I mean, that's his art name, uh, Alligator Jesus. He's an artist and uh, a long-time collaborator with me and the whole posse. Um, he, he's a, he's a jeweler. He lives in LA and, okay. uh, uh, but he started here with us. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, the whole okay. squad does their own thing. You know, we come together and, uh, at the end of the day, like it, it's blessed me to be able to, to include the triangulites into the Bermuda Triangle family because they put so much energy into the triangle and it's something that it, just for me I didn't it's not a cult but you know whatever people want to call it but for me it's like a family some you know uh, uh, the triangle connects us and the Bermuda Triangle gives us the energy and the light to focus on healing the world and try you know, bit by bit uh, create sonic frequencies that make people happy. So you've put together, or you guys have come together, I should, I should rephrase, you guys have come together, but everyone is an artist in their own right. Y'all are just triangle, Bermuda Triangle family. But like the alligator is an artist, the Jesus yeah. is an artist. Okay, everyone has their role. Everybody has, it's like a draft crew, you know, kind of like when we grew up, we're, we're in the same crew, you know what I mean? Right, yeah we, we are. We all different stuff from the world, but, yeah. you know. But I guess the, the, the concept with the Bermuda Triangle family was something more that I spawned as like a lifestyle and a way of life and uh, kind of like, like a, a, a crew. Yeah. Where do you get a lot of love, I feel like? Like if I had to guess, I'd definitely say that world of like Denmark, Sweden, you know, kind of. I, I get more love in, yeah, like Europe for sure. I get more love. Uh, Mexico. Um, Colombia, um, LA, I mean, in America, LA and SF, New York, the more LA, I get mad love in LA. Yeah. The guy that brought us to Japan was always uh, Steve Castro from Beta Bodega, and he, his label is like based off art, and, uh, and mainly it was the it, art was driven, his, lab, his label was driven by art, and music was just like on top of it, you know? 
That's so fresh, man. Yeah, they're definitely, they're definitely intertwined. Um, I'm just checking the clock. We got uh, seven minutes. Uh, but I, I want to know, because this is so important for me, like, does, does your sound... Does your sound just transcend because you notice every, every artist, they kind of have to come reinvent them. Madonna, or, you know, you do this for 10 years, you got to come back, got to reinvent, you got to be this again, or you have to come up with a new kind of a style. Your music seems to like, it's just evolving, but it's relevant currently always. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's on. It's, it's mad weird with my tunes. Like I, I feel like I've made the same music always just i it, it, like like for instance like some tracks you know this this might blow people and maybe they don't like what i'm saying but you know like astronomical is a popular song but i made that song like eight years ago mm -hmm. it came out now you know but things happen like that like i remember um I, in my 2006 record i put out a track that like and it was like the third track i ever made but somebody would think I made it in 2005 or right. and released it in 2006. And that's how stuff is always like every day I'm making some something and it could get released tomorrow or in 10 years. Yeah. Know? Like the world's not ready for it, I guess, when you're doing it. So maybe what you're doing right now, we'll hear like in eight years and be like, oh, that's right on time. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe. But I mean, like, yeah, like when I, I remember... When you wrote like uh, astronomical, I remember I wrote it with Pepe Villete, and um, I remember him being like, "Man, that that's that sound is too that's too like the distorted bass is people aren't gonna feel it, you know." And I was like, "Yeah, they are, you know." Yeah. <laughs> oh, but maybe not right now. He felt it, you know. But I remember being like, "It like, but now it comes out, and now it's almost old, you know. Like people are already feeling it, you know." I love it, man. I love it. It's just, it's just constantly on, you know, it's, it's relevant at the time, whenever it comes out, it's just on. Maybe, maybe you're really, um, you know, particular about when you drop things, but I know that when they drop, they hit, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I mean, you, yeah. I love seeing you at the shows, man. It's a blessing. That, uh, I, I have to like, I'm, I, you know, I have to support number one, but number two, I just have to like, I'm in awe. Like I post up and I'm just like, is this motherfucker really, you know, doing, con, you know, Kung Fu on stage? And is there an alligator walking across the back of the state? Like, I've tripped out. Like, I'm just like. Yeah, yeah. Alligator Jesus, Master Feathers, Notorious <laughs> Nasty, Ava, Diamond Eye Tiger, and you know, like all these heads coming together, like Sosa. Sosa Dose is out there for <laughs> sure. Yeah, shout out Sosa. Shout out A-Hole too. Girl, making our outfits, the whole squad, you know? The host you to, yeah, you managed to put to, and that's another thing, not only big picture mentality of successful people that, you know, is a kind of a common theme, but surrounding yourself with the, with a good, legit crew of people that do work and, and are loyal and are, and are dope. You know, it takes a village to put out a brand, a product, you know, it's, you can't do everything on your own. You know what I'm saying? For sure. For sure. For you know, sure. Even, I, love, I love my squad. Shout out the Mita Triangle family. Yes, you know? for sure, man. It's so incredible, man, because those guys, they got your back, dude. They're, I see you. Everyone has a job. Everyone's doing something. I, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of moving parts. For sure. Yeah, the, the, you know, the music, you know, the, the string quarantine, I, I, I've been able to get in the studio at least an hour a day, two hours, you know, which is rare. You know, I was supposed to be gone the whole year. And, yeah, uh, man. We've had to yeah. cancel. Which, it's it's a, it impacted you pretty heavy, huh? Yeah, everybody. You know? Everybody, I know. Um, same. At, at the same time, yeah, like we had all these tours planned and booked, and uh, we had to reschedule them, postpone them, cancel them. Um, but it is giving me a chance to finish tons of music, and uh, uh, which is my dream to to create. You know, be able to create. I love shows too because. I, every show that I do is like a healing experience. Yes. And the audience, like I try to just make everybody as happy as possible and shed all the demons, you know? And uh, yeah. Hell yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. It's definitely like, I, I see it as a, as a release out there. Like you give it all, but you leave it on stage, man. I do. Bro. I love you, bro. It. I see you after the show. You're like pouring fucking sweat. 
I love it. I love it. I, last time I played uh, uh, um, Vienna last year. Uh, no, was it last year? Yeah, yeah, last year. I played Vienna. Uh, I, I, it was the most intense. They oversold the show. Awesome. Great. My boy that does shows out there. Um, but uh, what was insane about it was, like, I never felt, like, I always feel faint on stage. And I always get dizzy doing certain songs where I'm screaming, like maybe for three minutes. And then like, ooh, I'm like, okay, I'm going to throw up or something. Right. But this time, and then, you know, it's, I snap out of it. But this time I couldn't snap out of it. It was like the whole, like the, ne the next 20 minutes. And I played for two hours. It's like one of those, like, people are just like, you can't stop playing, you know. And the room yeah. was, and everybody was, it was a cave, you know, under a train or a station in a cave. Shit. Great the middle of summer, you know? So nuts, man. So nuts. Miami is next, next level. Bermuda Triangle, the power here is strong. It's the porthole to the universe, you know? We breathe, we breathe, you know, that the, the currents of the oceans bring us such magic. And like we were saying back in 95 when we met each other, did we think Miami, oh, look at the base shirt. Yeah. Did we think, you know, that in, uh, in, in 95, Miami was going to turn into this mecca? Uh, unreal. You know, unreal. 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 It, it's really, it's such an, an, an unreal explosion just of everything from buildings to culture to restaurants to music to just, it's a, it's a thing. It's an animal, man. It's huge. It's huge, bro. It's huge. Hey, we're talking how you, uh, in the last segment, how you leave it all on stage, how, you know, I just see you just dump every ounce of energy you have and come off stage. I got a couple cousins, uh, shout out to Jose Elias and, and Tony Laurencio, uh, a couple cousins, they're musicians too, and we have conversations like this, and I tell them, man, I'm so jealous of you, bro, because, man, you get on stage, you do your thing, and you get that instant gratification, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. everybody, boom, with the bass you do, all that, or the music that they play. And then I started thinking, because, you know, with the art stuff, I do it, no one knows me, and I go away and see the, you know, mirror on the wall or whatever, and, you know, that's cool, you know. I, it, it's cool to get that instant gratification that you get. It is, but definitely, if you make tunes in the studio, when you're making them, you don't get the instant gratification. You do from, like, your ego, you know, and right. like your, you know, your third brain and your eighth eye, and you're like, oh, yo, tremendo bass, bro, this thing just goes down, you know. <laughs> But definitely, you don't, you, you don't get the instant gratification, but definitely you get the, the you feel the bass in the studio and you're like, Mia, yeah. <laughs> so this is Miami's Best Thursday. I'm your host, Pedro Amos. We're live and direct from the Miami's Best Graffiti Guide offices. We got my man right here, Otto Van Scratch, Miami Royalty. This is everything creative, everything Miami music, art. We're talking shop. And bringing back memory lane through here, bro. Taking the stroll after so many years of knowing each other, man. It's really, really blessing to catch up with you. Yeah, my brother, for sure. Yeah, the Salad City, Miami 305. Yo soy el loco that brought you Salad. Tattooed on my brain wave Alligator skin Everglades Cold-blooded reptile from Miami Dade Alligator skin Everglades Chrome Ave Mikasuki paid Astronomical Beluga caviar Like her caviar she feed me at her salad bar Astronomical Beluga caviar She feed me caviar like I'm the Russian Zoltar It's ladies night, I get turned up It's ladies night, I get turned up Gonna hiccup all over her big butt Like the golden child, she want my ice cream Calls me in her sleep, says I'm a dream I'm a now and later, I'm her flavor saver Like my taste so much, she eat it now and later Chinese, like a throwing star I see you scrolling girl, that's your calm guard 
like a Chinese star, razor sharp, penetrate my name, deep in her heart. Follow the lights, follow the lights. I will save you. Auto, Singao, como bacalao, machucao. I'm a mastermind, certified. Don't believe me, ask Chuck from the new times. I'm a mastermind, straight certified. Don't believe me, ask Chuck from the new times. much fun dude like i immediately you know 